In today's video, I'm going to show you how I'm using an Arduino and the Adafruit INA3221 power monitor to build a battery tester that can measure battery voltage from 0 to 26 volts across three channels. And it can also measure current across three channels. Natively, the board is rated for plus or minus 3.2 amps, but I've added an external shunt and I should be able to measure plus or minus 100 amps. These three wires on the top connect to the shunt. The red connects to the battery. The yellow connects to the other side of the shunt and black is ground. This is the battery that I'm testing. It's a 12 volt, 20 amp hour battery. Power is going through these wires across the shunt into my battery charger, which is doing 10 amps. Normally this would be plugged in the wall, but instead I'm using power from my EcoFlow battery. So when it comes time to discharge test the battery, I can recoup all that electricity. This is an optional LCD display that I made to display all the parameters of the test. When it comes time to discharge the battery, I can use my 26 amp battery charger, or I can plug the battery straight into the back of my EcoFlow into the solar panel input. I can set the EcoFlow to absorb four, six, eight, up to 13 amps. And the nice thing is it's being stored and I can use that energy to recharge the battery that I'm testing over and over again. Now that we're discharging the battery, the current is reading negative and we're subtracting amp hours. The power monitor board and the Arduino connect together using the Stemma Quick Connector. These connectors make it really easy to connect peripherals without having to solder wires. These four pin cables carry power and communication. I did move the red wire from 3 volts to 5 volts to make the backlight on my LCD display brighter. I made sure to verify that all the boards that I have plugged into the Stemma connector are 5 volt compatible. The Arduino I'm using is the SparkFun Thing Plus C. It has USB-C, has a built-in Stemma Quick Connector, it has the ESP32 controller, has built-in Wi-Fi, it has a built-in RGB LED, has built-in battery charger, and best of all, it has a built-in SD card slot on the bottom for doing data logging. Most of the Stemma Quick connector PCBs have two connectors, so you have an in and an out. Here I have the out connected to an array of two LCDs and two push button rotary knobs. On the back side, you can see the two PCBs for the LCD connected with quick connectors. I also have a real time clock here on the left that keeps time with a battery backup, and it keeps the data that I'm logging time stamped with accurate time. The board on the right is a Stemma hub that just allows multiple connections. On the top, I have two rotary encoders with a multicolor NeoPixel LED, and these are also two push buttons. These encoders also have a in and out stemma connector, so it's so nice being able to daisy chain these together. I'll show you what the back side looks like. You can see the battery there for the real time clock underneath. Having an analog input, a push button, and a multicolor light in one package is so convenient. They also come in a four pack. All right, so let me show you what this all does. I'm gonna start by turning power on. And when we boot up, I just have a description of what the left and right knob and push buttons do. On the lower screen, you can see that we're creating a new file on the SD card with today's date. Once the screen's booted up, we have the date, the time, and the interval that we're recording to the SD card, as well as a countdown timer showing how many seconds are remaining. The right knob scrolls through preset times, so we have a 60 minute preset. As I turn the knob, we have 30 minutes, 10 minutes, 5 minutes, 60 seconds, 30 seconds, 20 seconds, 10 seconds, 5 seconds, and 1 second. The last line on the bottom shows how many successful writes and how many failures we had writing to the SD card. Every time we write to the SD card, I change the pixel on the knob from blue to green, and that's also duplicated on the Arduino. If we look at the lower screen, this has a bunch of information that you can scroll through using the left knob. And right now we're displaying the battery voltage, current, amp hours, watts, and watt hour. As we scroll to the top of the list, we end up duplicating what's on the top screen. As we scroll down, we get the original battery monitor display. Scrolling further down, I'm displaying the two extra channels on the power monitor, as well as the internal battery voltage. And at the bottom, I'm displaying the difference between the real-time clock and the millis function. 
I let this run overnight and the two have always remained closely synchronized. You've probably noticed all these white numbered stickers. These are the addresses that I've set for all the devices on the I squared C bus. The addresses are set by soldering a bridge jumper on each circuit board. This is the back side of the knob again, showing the A1 jumper soldered across. If this all seems super complicated, you can really eliminate everything behind my hand and just run the Arduino with the power monitor. Because if you plug into the laptop, you can display all this information on the serial port and still write to the SD card. You don't even need a real-time clock because the millis function is so accurate. One cool thing about the real-time clock is when you download, you can send your computer's date and time to the real-time clock to set it automatically. If you write your data to the serial port using a CSV format, you can open up the chart plotter and display those variable names and their values on chart. Here's all the data that we recorded to the SD card. If data is rapidly changing, I can increase the record frequency to one second. If I know it's going to be pretty stable for a couple hours, I can just record once every few minutes. I've arranged the data that I want to plot in these green cells, and here's the chart. This orange line is my current. You can see that we're charging at 10 amps. And as I sweep across, we're discharging at 8 amps. And you can see the green line is our accumulated amp hours increasing and decreasing. The total amp hours for my 20 amp hour battery ended up being only 19.5. To calibrate the current on my energy monitor, I'm comparing it to my voltmeter and the battery charger, and they're all pretty close in agreement. My fluke meter only goes to 10 amps, so I have this other meter that can go up to 50, and everything's still in pretty close agreement. Next up is a review of the code that I wrote for the Arduino. The first few screens are just commentary and declaring variables. One thing to note when doing math with unsigned long data types, you have to have this UL extension on your constants so that they're treated as an unsigned long number. This is just a declaration for the LCD. Here's where I'm setting the address of LCD1 and LCD2. Most of this is just copied from the examples for each of the circuit boards. And this is all basically just setting them up with the variables and constants. I didn't write any of this code, this is just copied. This is where I had to change the base address for the rotary encoders because it conflicted with the battery charging circuit address on the Arduino. This is where I have my interval presets to find in an array. So if you want to change those, you can change them there. Here's the code to make the SD card work. And I did have to reassign the pins for my specific Arduino. The default pin assignments did not work. This is the setup part of the code. This just runs once on startup. This is just turning on the status LEDs to let me know that the boot process has started. This is the information that's displayed first thing on the LCD screen. This is where I'm configuring the power monitor card. We're taking an average of 16 samples uh, for every voltage reading and current reading. That was just default. This is where I set the resistance of the shunt that I'm using instead of the 0.05 ohm built-in shunt. This is the battery charging circuit built into the Arduino. This is the real-time clock. And here's where the date and time get sent when you download the program. This is where all the functions are stored for the SD card. You can delete files, you can add files, you can append files, you can create directories. This is just a copy and paste from the SD card example. This is where I'm writing the header for the CSV file every time a new file is created. If you wanted to log more things like temperature and humidity, you could just add it to this CSV list. This is just a copy paste from the encoder example. Loop is now where our program starts. We're going to read the three currents and three voltages from our power monitor. I added a minus sign here for the current and wattage to make it match the direction that I wanted it to be. This prints the status of the built-in battery charging circuit to the serial port. I just had this commented out. This is just updating the string of date and time using the real-time clock. We can also get temperature from it. This is where the interval timer has completed a cycle and we write all of our data to the SD card. If you wanted to record more things like temperature and humidity, you could just add it to this CSV list. Again, because the millis function is an unsigned long data type, we have to use this extension on our constants. 
The millis function is just counting how many milliseconds the Arduino has been powered on. And at some point that number will roll over back to zero. So this is just handling that exception. This is where we're calculating amp seconds and watt seconds and converting those to amp hours and watt hours. And we're also writing to the serial port every thousand milliseconds so that we can see the data on the serial port and use the built-in logging function. I have some things that blink faster than one second, so that's what this code is used for. This code doesn't really do anything. It was just a test to see how far the millis function and the real-time clock drift. This is where I'm reading the position of the two rotary encoders. It's being stored in variable i and k. The data type in the example is actually an array of four encoders, but I'm only using two. This is a list of all the things that I'm displaying on the two LCDs. The top LCD just displays the first four lines, and the bottom LCD can scroll between all of these lines, displaying four at a time. If the LCD display is displaying a three-digit number and it changes to a two-digit number, there'll be a ghost character left behind. So this section of code is monitoring the string length of each line, and if it becomes one less, the section of code will write a blank string to overwrite that ghost character. This section of code is removing ghost characters from all 19 lines of data displayed. This is what scrolls what lines are displayed as you turn the rotary knob. This sets the color of the NeoPixels on the rotary encoders. This next section just toggles the LCD backlight on and off if you press the knob button. This section turns the LCD backlight on if you just rotate the knob. And this very end is a screensaver that turns the screen off after an hour. And we've reached the end. Well, thank you for watching this far. Uh, the reason I made this video was to make a turnkey data logger for anyone in need of recording data. It doesn't have to be recording volts, amps, watts. It could be recording temperature or humidity or weight or strain. Um, I tried to make the code modular so that you could just pull out sections that uh, you don't need. Uh, it also doesn't need both LCDs. I made one of the rotary encoders scroll so you can see all the information just on one LCD. I'll make the Arduino code, the 3D prints, and list of materials uh, available for download in the description below. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to put them in the description below and I'll do my best to answer them. And uh, thanks again for watching.